The most annoying thing about making emulsions is the fact that you have to heat it up and then add back in the water that evaporates, emulsify it, and then wait for it to cool down. This really discourages me from making lotions a lot of times because I just, I don't have patience. What if I told you there was an emulsifier that is actually really easy to use, it's beginner friendly, it makes emulsions so fast, and there literally is no heating required. And the emulsions this emulsifier makes can be thick enough to put in a jar, but also thin enough to add in a treatment pump. And of course, you can still add it in a basic pump bottle. This emulsifier I'm gonna be talking about is Gelmaker Nuts. Gelmaker Nut is a cold process emulsifier. It can emulsify up to 35% oils. It's stable in pH levels between five to 12. It's recommended to be used in between one to 3% and you wanna add it into the oil phase of your formulas. As we know, every formula needs to add up to 100%. I'm gonna use Gel Maker Net at the maximum usage rate to make the moisturizer as thick as possible. So I'm gonna use 3% in phase B, AKA the oil phase. So now we need to pick a preservative because this product will contain water and any product that has water needs a preservative. I think I'm gonna go with GeoGuard 221 this is EcoCert, and I know a lot of you guys are gonna be asking for an EcoCert preservative. So I'll just show an example of using one of these, but I do recommend Liquid Dermal Plus for beginners, and it's my go-to preservative to use most of the time, especially when I'm experimenting because it's so easy to use, and I never experience any random surprises when using it. But we're gonna use GeoGuard 221, and I'm gonna add it into phase A, even though I accidentally made a mistake, it should actually go into phase B, but the formula will still work if you put it in phase A, and I'm gonna use it at 1%. Next, let's choose a humectant. A humectant hydrates the skin. Think H humectant, H hydrate. That's how I remember it. Glycerin is my go-to humectant. It's so easy to find, inexpensive, great for beginners, but I also wanna use propendiol because I want tons of hydration. You don't need to use both. You can use just one if you want. I'm gonna use a combination of two. You could use some aloe vera powder if you want, this does have a tendency to lower the pH, so keep that in mind if you're using it. You could use aloe vera extract if you don't wanna worry about it messing with the pH. You could also add in some ultra low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. You can mix it in with the glycerin first before adding in the water. This will really help hydrate the skin and it's like a luxurious ingredient. Or you can use something like fancier, like ceramides. Ceramides are pretty pricey, but this rice ceramides from Brambleberry is pretty inexpensive, so have fun with it. I'm going to use 5% propendiol and 5% glycerin. You can use a humectant of your choice, but these two are great for beginners. Now we need to pick an emollient. This is a must. This will help moisturize the skin. So we could pick some kind of carrier oil like apricot kernel oil. If you have mature dry skin, you want to look for oils that are high in oleic acid. And if you have oily skin, you want to look for oils that are high in linoleic acid. You could also use oils like lemon peel oil to help brighten the skin. If you decide to use something like coconut oil that changes in viscosity in different temperatures, you'll need to keep in mind that this will affect the final viscosity of your moisturizer. It'll change from thicker to thinner in different temperatures. You also want to keep in mind how the oils feel. Something like castor oil might be way too heavy on the skin. So take some oils, Try them out on your skin, see what you think of them so you can get familiar with your oils and pick the oils that your skin likes. You can also use some butters. Keep in mind, butters are solid, so you will have to heat up phase B if you decide to add in some butters. So keep that in mind, you won't be able to add in any heat sensitive ingredients in there, but different butters have different textures and hardnesses. So again, apply them to the skin and see what you think. You could also use something called emollient esters. These are similar to like carrier oils, but they're much more light on the skin. They're used in moisturizers marketed as oil-free. And my favorite is caprylic capric triglyceride. And lastly, if you wanna be super fancy, you can use things like silicones, such as dimethicone. This will really add that luxurious feel to this moisturizer and it'll feel just like a store-bought moisturizer. I'm gonna keep things simple and I'm using a total of 15% carrier oils. I'm using 5% rosehip seed oil, 5% macadamia nut oil, and then 5% papaya oil. Now let's pick an antioxidant. I do think an antioxidant is always necessary for your products. The most common is vitamin E, so that's what I'm gonna be using. If you check any moisturizer, most likely it contains vitamin E. So let's add that in there. I'm gonna be using 0.2% 
and again adding it into phase B because it's oil soluble. Now a lot of you guys might be asking, what about vitamins? These are commonly found in our skincare products. DL Panthenol is probably the most popular. This is vitamin B5 and it's super easy to use for beginners. So that's what we're gonna use. Niacinamide is also super popular, but it is pH sensitive. It needs to be in a pH of six, which makes it not so beginner friendly. And then there's also the famous vitamin C. This again is a bit more of an advanced ingredient. It's pH sensitive. And I actually did just post a video over on Patreon formulating a 10% vitamin C treatment using Gel Maker Nat. So if you want that formula, go check out my Patreon. It's $5 a month. I've also actually been posting some free content on there lately. So go over there and check out what I have to offer. Anyways, I'm gonna be adding 2% of that DL Panthenol into phase A because it's water soluble. Now moving on to extracts because I know you guys all love your botanical extracts. So you can use things like licorice extract to help brighten the skin, green tea extract because it's packed with antioxidants, calendula because it's soothing, cucumber extract because it's soothing, ginseng extract is great for mature skin, willow bark extract is mildly exfoliating, so is papaya enzyme. There's all kinds of fun botanical extracts that you can pick, so have fun with this. Just make sure you're using it within the recommended usage rate. I'm gonna be adding in 2% ginseng extract and this is water soluble, so I'm adding it into phase A. And if you check your supplier with where you bought it, it'll mention what the recommended usage rate is and it'll also mention if it's water or oil soluble. So now what we need to do is add up all of our percentages, which equals 33.2. And since our formula needs to add up to 100, we're gonna take 100, subtract 33.2, and you get 66.8, which means we need 66.8% distilled water to make this formula 100%. Because moisturizers contain a water phase and an oil phase, so that's why we have phase A and phase B. Here is our final formula for our easy, beginner-friendly moisturizer for all skin types. And here is our 400 gram batch recipe. If you aren't sure how to take a formula and make it into a recipe, I'll have a video linked down below that explains how to do that. So now it's time to gather all of our ingredients and start formulating. So we're gonna start with phase A, which is all of our water soluble ingredients, which includes 267.2 grams of distilled water, 20 grams of glycerin, 20 grams of propendiol, eight grams of DL panthenol, mix that until it completely dissolves, and then eight grams of ginseng extract. You can use whatever extract you want or just replace it with water and then four grams of GeoGuard 221, but this is not water soluble. I should have put it in phase B. It still works out though, because we're using an emulsifier, so it'll emulsify anyways, but if this was like a toner, GeoGuard 221 would not work. So I just kind of like tried to mix that in a little bit. Anyways, moving on to phase B, we're gonna grab a separate beaker, add in 12 grams of a gel maker nap, 60 grams total of our carrier oils. I'm using a blend of three different oils. And then I'm gonna add in the vitamin E, 0.8 grams, and then just mix that all together. And then pour phase A, which is the water phase and the phase B. And I don't know why I left the spatula in there. Don't do that. And then mix with your immersion blender. You need to use a high shear mixer. And there you go. You have an instant, beautiful, Beautiful moisturizer. I'm telling you guys, it is beautiful. Did I mention it's beautiful? It has such a gorgeous texture. It's great for all skin types and it's like not too heavy, not too light. So let's check the pH. I'm gonna fill a small beaker with some distilled water, place my pH meter in, grab a small 25 milliliter beaker and add a small amount of my moisturizer in. You don't wanna place the pH meter straight into your moisturizer. You wanna put it in a separate beaker so we don't contaminate the moisturizer with the pH meter. And if you wanna watch a video all about pH, so you know everything about pH when it comes to formulating, which is super important when formulating, go watch my video all about pH. The moisturizer's natural pH was like 5.9, and you can just leave it there. Your skin's natural pH is between 4.5 and 5.5. I did lower mine a little bit, but that's all up to you. Anyways, let's talk about adding color. So first off, you might think of using mica powder. If you add the mica powder, like at the very end of emulsifying the lotion, you'll get like this grittiness and the mica won't completely disperse. 
you could mix the mica powder with some oil and then add that in at the end. That's what this swatch is from, so that definitely works. It's best to just add the mica powder into the oil phase before you do the emulsion, or you could use these water-soluble dyes. You can get them from Wholesale Supplies Plus. They used to be from Elements Bath & Body, but now they're like the same company. So I'm using a few of their different blues. This one I colored turquoise blue and I just did one drop. This one I colored sapphire blue and I did just one drop. And then this one I did coral blue and I did like one and a half drops. And then I just wanted to package them in different containers just to show you how it works in different packaging. This is a treatment pump with a very small opening and this moisturizer is thin enough to pump through that. So the annoying part is getting them in these bottles. You need to create your own like DIY piping bag or just use a piping bag. You can just fill a baggie with your lotion, cut off the corner and make sure the opening is really small because if you get any lotion on like the bottle edging, it's gonna get clogged and you're gonna have issues getting the lotion in. It was such a pain. Plastic bottles are so much easier than glass bottles. Also using a filling machine would probably be so much easier too. So if you have that, probably use that. But yeah, this is the final lotion. Let me know if you've ever used Gel Maker Nat and what you think of it. I definitely think it's an ingredient that everybody should try. And also I've never experienced soaping with this. It just rubs into the skin super easily. If you don't have patience like me and you hate making emulsions, you should definitely try this because it really encourages you to make lotions because it doesn't take forever. Also, let me know if you wanna see me make other products using Gel Maker Nat because I have some other products in mind. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Just know that you will never be notified through the comments or any random app that you wanna give away from me. The only way you'll be contacted is through Instagram. So you do need an Instagram to enter, but I'm gonna be giving away this 24 pack of clear two ounce jars. So here's what they look like. And these are glass as well. And it comes with 24. I'm not sure if I will be shipping it in this exact box. Just depends on whatever I can fit it in. But I will also include 24 white caps as well. So this is exactly what your jar will look like. These are the same jars I use for my business and I sold my moisturizers and jelly masks in these. And I just have so many of them left over from closing the business that I need to get rid of some. So to enter this giveaway, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Leave a comment down below saying you want to win the jars and then comment on my most recent Instagram post. Doesn't really matter. You can just comment this emoji if you want and I will be picking a winner in about a week and I will announce who the winner is on my Instagram story. I'm